Hi guys, it's Luke from Adam Builds, and today I'll be lifting the lid on the Dell XPS 15 9500. First off, I have to make mention of this. This wasn't his first 2020 XPS 15. Um, this is actually a replacement one. Unfortunately, when he received the initial one, there was an issue with the trackpad. There's a bit on that, but they seem to have resolved that now. Wheels were in motion. They managed to get a work order going. Parts were ordered. Wheels were in motion to get this one issue with his laptop fixed. However, in the time that that was going on, he started getting random shutdowns, blue screens, um, and to be honest, thanks to Dell's fantastic service center and the staff there, they decided instead of just replacing the trackpad and maybe getting it in to have a look, they just flat out replaced the whole PC for him. So he has a new, new XPS 15 2020. But enough of that and on to unboxing. So as we get this guy open, Geez, they'll really make you feel like you're unboxing a Bond gadget here. So let's get this guy out. Um, let's get this guy. One eternity later. Okay, now that we've got this full aluminium chassis out of there, let's have a look at what's underneath the laptop. So what we've got on the right hand side is a little lid that's actually a packet that holds all of the paperwork a little startup guide and all that sort of gear. Underneath that we've got the power brick. Now this power brick is 130 watt. I'm assuming the extra wattage is obviously for that 1650 Ti. I can't wait to plug this guy in and see what that 1650 Ti is like. Now obviously it uh, uses the USB type C to charge there and let's keep going. What's under this side? Just a lid. Uh, that's the other half of the power brick there, and we've got this little Dell printed dongle here. So USB Type-C to expand those ports out, and let's plug this in. And what Dell has given us here is the option to have a HDMI out or a standard USB. So going on a tour around the laptop, on this side we have one of those USB type C's, the standard SD card slot and the 3.5mm headphone jack. At the back some fairly decent ventilation out there. Um, the Kensington lock that nobody uses and two uh, of those USB type C's. At the front here we've got an indicator light, let you know when the thing's charging and whatnot. Underneath we've got more grill and then obviously on either side here and here that is the speaker outputs now let's have a look inside so big backlit keyboard top right hand corner is the power off button which is also a fingerprint reader and that massive mouse pad up top here we have the webcam and dual microphones also those lights flashing are to help recognize your face for face lock unlock and I love that Dell have decided to go with 16 by 10 instead of 16 by 9 gives us a little bit more real estate on the screen um, while still getting that you know comfortable size to sit on the lap on a desk I mean a lot of us are doing conferences on the kitchen table at the moment and this guy really works out well especially with the dual microphones and this quite good camera here which I'll put up a little video right now Okay, so I'm using the Windows camera app to capture this on the Dell XPS uh, 15 2020 model. And this is what you get for the webcam. And obviously this is what those dual mount microphones sound like. So that's the quality of that uh, camera. I'll let you decide whether or not it's up to scratch. But honestly, it's one of the better cameras that we've got in the household at the moment that's running off of a laptop. So looking at this keyboard, now both my wife and I have had a little bit of a play on this keyboard and to be honest, it is wonderful. We really 
like the feel there's good travel there's there's that definite feel it's not super loud it's it's just a really nice laptop keyboard and the feel the texture of this carbon fiber finish i don't know what it is but it just it's lovely so we have this massive trackpad a microsoft precision trackpad so it has all of the gesture controls that you would expect i'll give that time to load in so but very tactile very a nice let you know without letting the neighbors know that you clicked on your mouse um, so very nice feel and nice to have that size i've got to say the way that this thing is put together is just amazing it feels like quality even though it is quite light it feels like quality and i mean maybe it's time that we see what quality looks like on the inside. Using a T5 Torx bit, I was able to undo all of the screws, although I think the clips would have more than held this back cover plate on. Okay, so after about 15 harrowing minutes, I've managed to release all of the clips. So let's have a look inside. Okay, so in this corner over here, we've got our killer Wi-Fi and then we've got two massive fans hooked up to the heat distribution network that they've got here. CPU on the left, GPU on the right there. As we move down the board here, the battery takes up the lower third and it's an 86 watt. So moving up above there is our first SSD installed by factory so it's got the uh, cover on it and a spot for another SSD M.2. Uh, both of the RAM slots are populated, 16 gig sticks, just Hynix stuff there. Got a couple of breakout boards and stuff like that over here. Um, and then down to the speakers, so rather large speakers on either side there. And I think it's time we put this thing back together. Okay, so now that it's back together and working... ...and working, let's do some uh, testing to see what this thing can actually do. So on to the benchmarks. Starting out with some user benchmarks. Now I've gone for an unpowered and powered approach here just to show the difference. And as you can see, just a little bit of a performance bump once you plug it in, but that should be expected. Overall though, the CPU performed quite well. The onboard graphics, well, are uh, onboard graphics. So expect what you should expect. As we move on to the Geekbench benchmarks, we see what we should expect from that i7 with the single and multi-core scores and some respectable scores for that 1650 Ti. Moving on to the Cinebench R15 multi-run scores, as you can see the 1650 leveled out a bit but not a massive amount of performance loss due to heat. Whereas stepping over to the CPU here, you can see we've had some big dips. Thermal really affecting the way that the CPU performed there over the runs. So that's something to keep in mind if you're planning on doing hours of gaming on this thing. Now let's take a look at how it sounds. I'm quite used to speakers being quite muddy on laptops. And whilst they have been improving, I was really actually surprised with the quality of audio from this guy. <laughs> So the bases are bassy, 
the trebles not tinny at all it could quite easily watch a feature length movie on this so really impressed with the sound and really impressed with this laptop overall so let me know what you guys think if this is the type of laptop that you're looking for in 2020 i know dell have the 13 which is a bit of a compromise but they also have the 17 so if you're after a larger laptop that might be the answer for you on that note that's all i've got for you today and uh, i'll catch you in the next one guys bye